Yet another night of protests here in Green Country. Uh, demonstrators hold rallies at the Tulsa Hills Shopping Center and in front of the Rogers County Sheriff's Office. So far tonight, we've seen smaller crowds remaining peaceful. We begin our team coverage with Channel 8's Tyler Butler live at Tulsa Hills. Tyler? Yeah, Neely Mark, as you just said, peaceful protests out here, smaller than we have seen in previous nights. They're gathered here uh, on that intersection, kind of right near where the target is. Now, there was a hinkling uh, hint earlier today that there would be a group out here, so a lot of the businesses here closed up early as a precaution. Uh, and last night, what we saw uh, when things were getting a bit uh, destructive, we saw people standing outside businesses guarding their property with guns, preparing to use deadly force if necessary to protect their businesses. But I spoke with an expert who says you really need to think twice before you bring a gun to do that kind of a situation. Andrea Gardner spent a lot of the day on the phone with customers. We've had calls nonstop. Are you guys, are you guys open? No, nope, we're sure not. <laughs> The wine and cigar cellar closed early because Gardner was told there was a credible threat of damage tonight at Tulsa Hills. It's been a hard couple of months for a number of reasons, and it certainly doesn't help us or, you know, the all of the small businesses out there who have struggled a lot more than us through this. Last night, we saw some business owners prepared to use their guns to defend their stores. It's not like the movies. It's not one and done. The ripple effect of that violent encounter will follow you for the rest of your life. Firearms trainer Chuck Smith says if an owner does plan to defend their business with a gun, there's a lot that needs to be considered first. What we sometimes fail to realize is really what we're talking about when we get involved in that, and that's taking the life of another human in defense of that business, which in fact is property if we really want to get down to it. He says if you absolutely must be out there, he recommends staying inside the business, having a set plan for what will make you react with that weapon, and realize that you aren't guaranteed to win. It's a 50-50, and you can, you can instill yourself with all kinds of confidence, but when it comes down to it, there's two parties at play here, and it can go either way. Um, simple mistakes, and they happen. For most businesses, they'll do what Gardner's doing, backing off, hoping for the best, and letting insurance handle it if something does happen. We have insurance coverage. You know, it would be a nightmare, but the worst case scenario is that we would have to file a claim and regroup after that, but it's far better than putting someone in danger. So again, at this point down here at Tulsa Hills, haven't seen any kind of destructive activity. Uh, and to clarify a little bit more on these stand your ground laws, uh, Chuck Smith was telling me that does not grant you complete immunity here. Examples he was giving is that uh, if you take a punch, that doesn't give you the right to shoot someone. If uh, you're standing outside your business, you're no longer in that kind of safe zone of inside your business where you could be immune uh, from any kind of thing. Basically, what you need to establish is that if you're going to take that action, you have to realize a judge and jury is going to have to figure out if a reasonable person would fear for their life in that situation. Reporting live at Tulsa Hills, Tyler Butler, Tulsa's Channel 8. All right, Tyler.